Hi, my name is Paul Grogan and welcome to the Gaming Rules official how to play video for Keyflow, designed by Sebastian Bleasdale, Richard Breeze and Ian Vincent. Keyflow is a game where two to six players are each trying to build the most productive village. Starting with a home card, you will expand your village over the course of four seasons, by drafting and then playing cards. Some cards depict roads which have various abilities, I'll refer to them as road cards in this video. Keeple cards can be played in either your village or sometimes a neighbour's village to activate the road card and use its ability. You can also play cards depicting rivers which cannot be used by keeples but will generate useful resources. During the game you will transport goods between your cards in order to upgrade your buildings. At the end of winter the points are added up and the player with the best village, i.e. the most points, wins the game. Separate the cards into six piles based on the icons on the backs. The grey cards are the home cards, the multicoloured cards are the store cards and the other four piles are for the four seasons. Take the spring cards and separate the ones with the K on them, shuffle the K cards and then remove a number of them back into the game box depending on the number of players in the game. For cards with a number on them, return to the box any card showing a higher number than the number of players in the game. So, for a four player game, return cards showing 5 plus and 6 plus to the box. Then, shuffle together the spring K cards and the remaining number cards and place them face down as the spring deck. Repeat this process for the summer and autumn decks. For the winter cards, separate out the K cards, shuffle them and place them face down in a deck. Then, remove the numbered winter cards higher than the player count, shuffle the remaining ones and place them in a separate winter deck. You should now have five decks, one for each season except for winter which has two decks because it's special. Each player is dealt one home card at random which is placed face up in front of them and a store card which is placed off to one side. Return any remaining home cards and store cards back to the box. Each player is dealt six cards from the spring deck or eight cards in a two player game. These cards form your starting hand, you should look at them but keep them secret from the other players. Each player is also dealt 5 Winter K cards, or 7 cards in a 2 player game. Return any unused Winter K cards unseen to the box. The Winter cards will only come into play, believe it or not, during winter, but you should look at them to give you some guidance on strategy as they will give you points at the end of the game. Keep them face down near your store card. Place the resource counters, keeple tokens, upgrade tiles and double sided skill tiles nearby. Take the single sided skill tiles, turn them all face down and mix them up. And you're now ready to begin the game. The game is played over four rounds, each round representing one season, starting in spring and ending in winter. Each round consists of six phases. In phase one, the cards for that season are dealt out, but you'll skip this phase in spring as it's already been done during setup. In summer, autumn and winter, take the appropriate deck and deal out the cards evenly between the players. You deal out all of the cards, so in a 3 to 6 player game each player gets 6 cards in spring, 7 in summer, 8 in autumn and 9 in winter. Phase 2 is divided into a series of turns and in each turn players simultaneously choose one card from their hand to keep and pass the rest to their neighbour. You pass the cards you don't choose to your left neighbour in spring and autumn and to your right neighbour in summer and winter. This is shown by the arrows on the backs of the cards. And since you play one card per turn, the number of turns in each season is equal to the number of cards in your hand at the start of this phase. All players then simultaneously reveal their card and play it, adding road and river cards to their village or playing keeple cards to activate other cards. You then pick up the cards given to you by your neighbour and the process repeats until all of the cards for this season have been played. If you play a village card with either a road or a river on it, it expands your village, which consists of two rows of cards, your home card and all of the road cards on top, and the river cards on the bottom row, offset by half a card's width. When you add a new card, it must connect to at least one existing card, but you can leave gaps as shown here. If the river card you play has a rounded box on it like this, you immediately receive the skill tiles and or resources shown. If a specific skill tile is shown, as is in this case, you take one of the double sided skill tokens and place it in front of you. If this icon is shown, you get one random skill tile, you can look at it and then place it face down in front of you. Any resources taken are placed on the card which generated the resource, so in this case I place one stone on the card to keep this cow company. 
I'll explain what the animals on the cards do much later on in this video. Keepal cards come in four colours depending on the season. The arrows on them indicate where the card can be played. This one can only be played in your own village. This one can be played in your own village or the village of the player to the left or the player to the right. This one can only be played in your village or the one of the player to your right. And this one can only be played in either the village to your left or the village to your right, but not on your own village. This means that in games with four or more players, you will not be interacting directly with anyone other than the players to your immediate left or immediate right. The other villages are just too far away. The rules for a two-player game are slightly different. A keeple card with an arrow pointing left can be played on your opponent's home card and any card to the left of their home card from your viewpoint. And a keeple card with an arrow pointing right can be played on your opponent's home card and any card to the right of their home card. Now that we know which village the card can be played in, let's look at which building it can be played onto. A card with a single keeple on it can only be played in a building with no other keeple card there. A card with two keeples on it can be played in an empty building or one with one other keeple card there. And a card with three keeples on it can be played in an empty building or one with one or two other keeple cards there. The number of keeples on the cards already played doesn't matter, it's simply the number of cards played, and this can be seen by the small keeple icons shown at the bottom of the cards. Here's an example to help clarify this. The artisan is currently empty, so any keeple card could be played there. Let's say I play one with three keeples on it. The fact that there are three keeples on this card is now irrelevant, it still just counts as one card played. So the next card played to the same building must either have two or three keepers on it. And let's say I play this one, overlapping it so you can clearly see that two cards have now been played. Now that there are two keeple cards on this building, in order to play a third one, that card must have three keepers on it. And no more than three keeple cards can be played on a building. If you play a keeple card with this icon on it, you take a keeple token from the supply. These tokens have two uses, one of them when playing cards and one of them after all cards in the round have been played. If you use one of these tokens when playing a card, it adds two temporary keepals to the card, allowing you to play it where you may not have been able to play it previously. And you can even use this token immediately on the card that you played which gave you the token. The token is discarded back to the supply after use. When you play a keeple card on a building, you activate that building. The action available on a building is the topmost uncovered panel. Resource generating buildings such as the quarrymen simply generate the resources shown in the panel. And if you're activating one of your own buildings, you place those resources on the village card itself. If instead you're activating another player's building, you place the resources on your home card. Some cards convert one thing into another. For example, the carpenter converts one saw skill tile into four wood. This icon means any skill tile, so with the hiring fair, I could convert any one skill tile into two random skill tiles. When you spend a single-sided skill tile, return it to the pile and mix it in. If you spend a double-sided skill tile, return it with the others. When you activate your home card, you can transport resources and upgrade your cards. First, the number on the card indicates how many units of transportation you get, in this case one, and each unit of transportation allows you to move one resource along a road or river to an adjacent card. So I could move this gold from here to here. If I had more units of transportation, I could move more resources. For example, if I had three units of transportation, I could move one resource two spaces and another one one space. After moving resources, you can then perform one upgrade for each of these upgrade icons on the card. In this case, I can perform one upgrade. To upgrade a card, you simply pay the upgrade cost shown between the two panels. Any resources needed for the upgrade must be on the card itself, with gold counting as a wild resource. So I can upgrade the carpenter using the one wood and one gold. The resources used are removed, and I place an upgrade tile over the top panel. The carpenter is now upgraded, and when activated, it now produces three gold in exchange for a saw skill token. And this number here means that the card is also now worth five points at the end of the game. 
To upgrade this card, for example, requires one stone, and the white icon here means any one resource. Alternatively, instead of placing a new upgrade tile, you can use an upgrade action to flip over one of your existing upgrade tiles at no extra cost. And a flipped upgrade tile is worth one point at the end of the game. Because players play their cards at the same time, it can happen that two or even three players want to play keeple cards on the same building at the same time. For example, this is my village. Let's say I wanted to play this card this turn to activate my quarryman a second time. The problem is that Robert the quarryman is a very popular guy. I think he has a nice beard. So what happens if both of my neighbours also want to play a card on him at the same time? Well, they can. Because the cards are played simultaneously, the number of keeples required to play the card, in this case two, is only based on the cards that were already placed before the start of this turn. So in this case, all of these cards could be placed and everyone gets the benefit. This does slightly break the rules on there not being more than three cards on a building, but that's okay. But now no more cards can be played on Robert. And you can only play keeple cards on village cards that were in place before the current turn. So, for example, if I chose to play the Artisan this turn and added it to my village, the player to my left who played this Keeple card could not play it on the Artisan, because the Artisan card was not already in play at the start of the turn. The small number on each Keeple card is used when playing with the competitive variant of the game. The only difference this makes is that the decision about where the cards should be played is done in numeric order of the cards. So, going back to the previous situation with my very popular Quarryman Robert, because the card played by my left neighbour has the lowest number, that player would need to declare where it's being placed first. And if he chooses to place it on my quarryman, then the player to my right decides next, since they have the next lowest numbered card, and they may decide to change their mind. Note that this doesn't prevent anyone from playing cards as explained when not using these numbers, but there may be a situation where I would want to see what someone else does before deciding where to place my card. Once all cards have been drafted and played, the game proceeds to Phase 3, where each player may use any or all of their remaining Keeple tokens to activate more of their own village cards. If a building has not been used this round, or it was only used once, then one Keeple token can be used to activate the card. If a building has already been used twice this round, it can be activated a third time by using two Keeple tokens. And if a building has already been used three times this round, it cannot be activated again with Keeple tokens. For example, after all cards were played in Autumn, the upgraded workshop was only used once. So in Phase 3, I could use one Keeple token to activate it a second time. And then I could use two more Keeple tokens to activate it a third time. You can only use Keeple tokens in your own village. There is another way to get a Keeple token. The card that you choose to play in a turn, well, you don't actually have to play it. You could simply discard it, returning it to the game box, and take a Keeple token. You would do this if getting a Keeple token is better for you than playing the card. After all players have had a chance to use their Keeple tokens, things are tidied away to prepare for the next season. Keeple tokens used are placed back in the supply, and all Keeple cards you have in your village are collected and placed under your store card. The official rules state that you can only look at cards in your store at the end of each season. In the summer, a new type of card enters the game, the Summer Boats. These are river cards and are placed in the second row of cards in your village and therefore cannot be activated. However, each boat gives its owner a special ability, which they can use during the game. And these are all described in the rulebook. In autumn, a number of storage cards can be played. Again, these are river cards and cannot be activated by keepals, but these cards will earn you points at the end of the game for the resources of the appropriate type stored on the card itself. So you must use your transportation to move your resources here by the end of the game. Some cards can be upgraded more than once. These cards cannot be activated as there's no actual building action, but upgrading them will earn you more points at the end of the game as shown by the numbers in the coin icons. At the end of autumn, just before winter begins, each player chooses one of their winter K cards that they were dealt at the start of the game. Remember, you should have been looking at these cards during the game to give you an idea about your strategy. And once everyone has chosen their card, 
players simultaneously reveal them and place them into their village. The cards not chosen by players are shuffled together with the numbered winter cards to make the winter deck, which is then dealt out between the players. The winter cards, which include some boats, give you new ways to score points at the end of the game, which is what I'm going to explain now. Each player adds up their points as follows. The autumn store cards score points based on the resources stored on them. So in this case, I score 10 points because I have two sets of the required resources there. The extra wood does not count. And note the resources that are used in this way to score points cannot be scored by any other card. And in fact, this is the same for everything that you allocate to a scoring card in this phase. Everything can only be allocated to one other card. Each card scores the amount of points shown on the highest panel not covered by an upgrade tile. So here, for example, I have upgraded the Cathedral once, so it scores 12 points. And note that I also get one extra point because the upgrade tile has been flipped over. The winter cards all score points in different ways, and these are all fully explained on the back few pages of the rulebook, but I will go over a few of them now. You may have noticed that many of the cards have animals on them, cards in your village, and also keeple cards in your storehouse that you now take out and allocate. Animals on cards, as you have probably worked out by now, don't do anything during the game, but could be worth points at the end of the game if you have certain winter cards, such as the farmyard, which is simply one point per animal allocated to the farmyard. Some cards score points for your keeples that you have stored during the game. The Craftsman Guild, for example, scores you three points for each set of red, yellow and blue keeples allocated to it. An important note is each keeple card can only be allocated to one scoring card. So if I have this keeple card here with two red keeples and a pig, I can choose to allocate it to either the farmyard or the craftsman guild. So I will score for either the keeples or the pig, but not both. And finally, each gold resource not scored anywhere else is worth one point. And the player with the most points wins the game. In the case of a tie, the tied player with the most sheep wins, obviously, as sheep are the best. If it's still a tie, then it's the tied player with the most pigs. And then after that, the one with the most cows. Poor cows, always third tiebreaker. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful in learning how to play Keyflow. For more of my videos, please subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions about the game at all, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time, take care and thanks for watching.